Those who can see it will know that their final destination is yet to be decided. Its existence will depend on the failure executed by that being who has come from the very beginning of time. Before such an image, everybody falls and bows because he appears to be nothing of what he really is. Fair, impassive, analytical, aware of everything that humans ignore. His decision is final, but during the trial he is patient, willing to listen to both parties, the accuser and the accused. His very presence causes a tremendous impact. He can be seen as a dark being without a face, only two huge round eyes without pupils can be seen. Its head appears to be human but contains the information and knowledge of infinite eons and infinite omniverses. The future is beyond your knowledge, but you can almost predict it. Two huge wings cover their backs. One of red incandescent plasma and the other of blue frozen plasma. Her right hand is not visible, but it is believed that with it she is manipulating the cosmic matter of which souls are made. The left hand holds a huge mallet made of an unknown material. It is believed that the mallet is the fusion of all materials of the multiverse, united by the own will of the one who manipulates them. When it falls, the omniverses and abstract realms shudder, shrink, and rub, drawing sparks that can give rise to or destroy other omniverses and multiverses. He has no voice. Its verdicts are transmitted directly to the conscience of the accused. His voice is the universal voice that everyone hears, even the deaf and the foolish. Life will always be the prosecutor. It will impute each and every one of the most horrible sins that you have committed during your life, even without knowing it. The evidence will be compelling and accurate. You will stare in a sea of tears. You will ask for mercy. In some cases, you will gloat over what you have done. You will defend yourself. You will uselessly try to confuse him. Your witnesses will try in the same way, but all will be in vain. He and only he can give you another opportunity to present your case again. He and only he will tell you your failures and your successes. He and only he will give his final verdict and the sentence will be immediately fulfilled. The great mallet will fall and your soul will be scattered towards the infinite limits of space and time. Your skin will disintegrate and you will be fully conscious. Your nervous system will be charged with energy and will painfully disappear. You were never more alert in your entire life. Muscles and your organs will swell and explode in all directions. You will feel it all. Your bones will burn to the marrow and the ashes will be scattered into oblivion. All your work will disappear along with your being. There will be nothing left of you unless he wants it to. Your soul will be returned and mixed with the infinite matter of manipulated and revolted souls, waiting to be recycled in one of the countless multiverses in one of the most remote places of the times to come. The Supreme Judge has judged you. Take a deep breath and bear it with me. Don't worry, he is not behind you. At this very moment, Mandu is in your room. He is in plain sight from where you are reading this. Do not try to find him, it would make him angry. Mandu is the being that tries to hurt you in your most terrifying nightmares. Thus, it is recommendable that you try to wake up as fast as you can if you are in one of them. Mandu is also the spirit of those you once hurt, and therefore he'll seek revenge. Mandu is the fear you try to avoid, what you don't want to see, what you don't want to feel. Mandu is the fire from hell that you try to avoid, and the knife of which you avoid being a victim. As you read this, Mandu is slowly getting closer to you. Do not look, stay still. Once again, Mandu hates being looked for. That trepidation you're feeling from head to toe, that means Mandu isn't very far. Try to suppress any traumatic memories. Mandu will make you relieve them. Don't think about your darkest fears. Mandu will make them real. As saliva pours down your throat, that shiver in the back of your neck becomes present. Mandu is planning what to do with you how to satiate that hunger for revenge of those you have wronged. And guess what? Mandu is right above you. Do not look up. Make sure there's nothing in which his image can be reflected. Glasses, windows, even glass cups. If you're still reading this, then you're lucky. Mandu is still planning what to do to you. Maybe yank your tongue out, so you can't hurt anybody with your words anymore. Maybe tear your arms off, so you can't punch anyone. Maybe he'll gouge your eyes out, so you can't look at Alyssa's stuff anymore. 
Anybody, unknowingly, can become Mandu's victim, because humans always harm each other, and Mandu has to do his job. The person who took their own lives? They never harmed themselves. They were Mandu's victims. The people who died in accidents? Mandu was doing his job. Maybe, at this very moment, or a bit later, you might die. Drowned, asphyxiated, in an accident, or suffering the worst kind of fate you could ever imagine. And just then, Mandu's work will have finally been fulfilled. You should have been a kind-hearted person. We've all heard stories about haunted video games, lost episodes of beloved cartoons or TV shows, but there has always been a medium that until recently seems to have been immune to such tales, the humble comic book. Now before you ask, I didn't for one second believe that there is a massive conspiracy or some hidden reason for the event I am about to share with you. I think what happened was an example of something that has no reason, no grand scheme, it simply happened. And I hope it never happens again. So what happened? I'll tell you. I am a collector of DC Comics and as such I have always had a soft spot for Superman. Anyone who is into comics knows that some titles go into dark and disturbing imagery so when stranger gruesome things occur most rightfully dismiss it as a part of the story. This was how I first reacted when I got my hands on what I believed to be a new Superman title named No Heroes. The cover was completely black and the Superman logo was broken and decayed looking, again I thought this was all part of the story. I had already flipped through a few pages before purchasing, and to my surprise it was a fairly standard Superman book, so I bought it without much thought. Taking it home with me I sat down and began to read the comic in more detail. As soon as I opened it I was greeted with artwork that was drastically different from what I had seen at the glance in the store. Everything had a red tint to it and the characters were all angry and battered looking. Superman especially looked extremely menacing as I read the text appearing on the speech bubbles, I admit I was pretty shocked. This was not marked as a mature title and DC had have, until fairly recently been pretty uptight about how Superman was and was not to be portrayed, making what I read pretty confusing to say the least. Heroes aren't real, it's all fake, everything's a fucking lie. People aren't going to save you, they'll watch you bleed, you deserve to die. Life is a fatal disease which slowly eats us away, you're not perfect, you're no hero. Again and again I read these dark mysterious lines, it wasn't unusual for dramatic works such as comics to add moments like this, but as I continued to read I couldn't help but feel this was very off for a Superman book. Not a single word of encouragement or hope was to be found, or a titular hero, just kept silent as everyone around him spewed forth messages of hate and despair. The artwork grew increasingly disturbing with each new page until eventually, I began to question if this was some kind of joke. Superman walked down the streets of Metropolis and observed the rotting bodies of many heroes and villains from comic books. To my surprise, some of the characters were not even DC owned. After a while, the story grew violent as Superman began to destroy what was left of Metropolis, the destruction more graphic than normal even in the more extreme editions of the comic. Soon Metropolis was destroyed and a two page panel depicted the carnage, bodies laying on the street, what looked like children impelled on spikes formed by debris and figures hanging lifelessly from nooses tied to street lamps and signposts. Finally the comic ended with a full panel of page of Superman staring directly ahead as if looking to the reader, a speech bubble prominently stating, for years you watched us suffer, now it's your turn, hero. I didn't quite understand what that meant and at the time I was still a bit disturbed by the whole comic so I promptly put the thing away and never gave it a second glance. After such a horrid comic I decided I needed a change of pace so I got out one of my old Batman comics, the old and goofy version of the Dark Knight most people hate but I somewhat ashamedly have always rather enjoyed. I read the comic, it's old humor and camp style, a refreshing difference from the horrors and misery of no heroes. This was how I always remembered classic DC, fun and enjoyable. I got halfway through the comic and had just opened a new page, when my eyes grew wide with shock. 
I almost dropped the comic as I saw to my utter disbelief a full page panel of Superman in that disturbing art style and staring once more from the comic page, the prominent speech bubble stating, You don't get to be happy, hero. Purgatory and they beat the fucking case. Ha. I look around, man. 